Hi, I'm Julian Frost, N3JF, your ham radio sensei. And today we're talking about last minute holiday gifts for yourself or the ham radio operator in your life. I've got quite a few things on my list, so let's get going. First up, let's get licensed. The technician class license is the doorway to the hobby, so why not help someone you know get their ticket? Gordon West, WB6NOA, has been a ham since about the Jurassic period and has been teaching ham radio classes for almost as long. I'm not saying he's old, I'm just saying that he knows his stuff and he's responsible for a vast number of new hams. This box of four compact discs has everything new wannabe hams need to prepare for their license exam. Listen to Gordo's dulcet tones while you drive to work, take your lunch break, and sit in traffic on the way home, and you'll be ready for that license test in no time. If book learning is how you prefer to study, we've got that covered too. Of course, we have the entry-level technician class books, but we also have the general class license upgrade manuals too. The ARRL's general Q&A book is a good one, as is Gordo's extra class manual for those wanting to make it all the way to the top. Each book covers all the questions and gives all the answers, so you won't be surprised at anything you see on your exam. If you have time off during the holidays, why not learn a new language? Gordon West can help you learn Morse code with this eight disc set of compact discs. Starting with a simple one and two character letters, Gordo will get you copying CW at five words per minute, quicker than you can spell anti-disestablishmentarianism in Morse code. When you're traveling around the country with your handheld or mobile radio, you might need to know where the best repeaters are. The ArtSci repeater map book and directory is your go-to source for repeater information. Each US state has a map showing the location of repeaters and the frequencies on which they operate. Other pages list the towns where the repeaters are located, along with the frequency, offset, and tone used by the repeater. Use the book to find FM repeaters on 2 meters, 220, 440, 6 meters, and more, as well as local D-Star and Echolink repeaters. If you're using a handheld radio and can't make it into a repeater, maybe your antenna is the problem. While convenient, the small stubby antenna that comes with your HT, it's not very efficient, so it's time to upgrade. The MFJ1714, or as it's commonly known, the MFJ Telescopic 2 meter Long Ranger, is a half wavelength antenna for 2 meter operation. Unlike the antenna that comes with your HT, this antenna doesn't require a ground plane and is much more efficient. It's 10.5 inches tall when fully collapsed and 40 inches tall when fully extended. Remember though, it's only for 2 meters. If you have a dual band 2 meter 70 centimeter handheld, the SRHF 40A 2 meter and 70 centimeter antenna may be a good choice. This antenna's claim to fame is that it's ultra flexible. It's a quarter wavelength on 2 meters and a half wavelength on 70 centimeters. In addition to being able to transmit on 2 meters and 440, it's designed to be a good receive antenna for the 120, 150, 300, 450, 800, and 900 megahertz bands. It's pretty cool. You may not want to keep these long antennas on your radio all the time, but as the saying goes, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Personally, I always thought that saying was about donuts, but I can see how it works for antennas too. When you have a radio, one of the most useful tools used during testing is the dummy load. A dummy load provides a perfect match for your transmitter and takes the place of an antenna. It doesn't transmit your signal over the air, so you can use it while you test your microphone gain or compression, or check that your rig really is outputting power to the antenna connector, all without disturbing other people on the band. These two dummy loads, the MFJ262B and the Diamond DL30A are for low power QRP radios. The MFJ262B handles 0 to 3 gigahertz, 35 watts continuous, and up to 200 watts for about five seconds. The DLA30A, I did say DLA, the DL30A 
handles 0 to 500 megahertz at 15 watts continuous and 100 watts for up to 30 seconds. If you want to add a battery backup system to your station, take a look at the SuperPowerGate PG40S from West Mountain Radio. The PG40S can supply 40 amps continuously from either a power supply or a battery, and it will also keep the battery charged. If there's a power blackout or your power supply fails, the PG40S will instantly switch to battery power and keep you on the air. The PG40S is optimized for use with gelled and AGM type batteries, but will also work with flooded lead acid and marine type batteries. The charger is a four a four let me say that again. The charger is a four stage charger with selectable current rates of 1, 4, 7 or 10 amps. With all the ham radio gear you've been collecting, you'll need a power distribution system. West Mountain Radio manufactures the Rig Runner system. This kit called the 4005 Complete comes with a bag of 30 amp Anderson connectors, rubber feet for the metal case, and an instruction manual. It has five sockets for powering your gear and one DC input. It has two 25 amp connectors, one 10 amp connector, one 5 amp connector, and one 1 amp connector. Use any or all of the connectors, powering your equipment at 12 volts and drawing a maximum of 40 amps combined. The 4005. The Rig Runner 4008H Complete Kit also comes from West Mountain Radio and comes with the same rubber feet, a bag of 30 amp Anderson connectors, a power cord, some clips, and the instruction book. It has eight Anderson sockets for powering up to eight pieces of equipment at a time and one DC input. It has two 25 amp connectors, two 10 amp connectors, two 5 amp connectors, and two 1 amp connectors to keep all your 12 volt gear powered. The maximum current draw is 40 amps for all the sockets combined. I like this one because the Anderson connectors are horizontally mounted. To supply power to your rig runner, PowerWorks offers this SPS 30DM 30 30 amp variable desktop power supply. It has two nice digital LED meters which display both voltage and amps. The power supply can output a fixed 14.1 volts DC, or at the flick of a switch, it can be manually adjusted from 5 to 16 volts DC. The SPS 30DM will output 25 amps continuously and 30 amps peak. It's a tiny yet capable power supply that can run most of the equipment in your shack. The FT4X from Yesu is a lightweight, compact, dual band, 2 meter, 70 centimeter handheld radio that's great for taking with you on your soda and poda excursions. It can output 5 watts, adjustable down to half a watt, and the battery can last a whopping 15 hours. The supplied battery charger will recharge the battery in 3.5 hours. The FT4X has 200 memories and weather channel memories. The automatic range transponder system, or ARTS, lets you know when you move out of range of your friends who are also carrying ARTS equipped radios. It comes with the battery, belt clip, an AC adapter, manual, and an antenna, but you may want to upgrade that antenna to a more efficient one. See my earlier suggestions. Also available from Yesu is the very affordable FT60R. This battle-ready VHF UHF dual band 5 watt handheld radio belongs in everyone's go bag. It transmits on 2 meters and 440, but it also receives audio on the VHF and UHF TV channels, the VHF AM aircraft band, and a wide range of other commercial and public safety frequencies. Like the FT4X, it also has the ART system. It has 1,000 memory channels, 10 memory banks, one touch NOAA weather access, two programmable front panel keys, access to the wide coverage internet repeater enhancement system, or wires, and can even transmit your call sign and engage the microphone in an emergency. It comes with a battery, battery charger, antenna, belt clip, and a charging stand. The FT60R. For the final item in this video, we have the Zigu X6100 HF 50 MHz all mode transceiver. The X6100 is a software defined radio, which means its functions and abilities could be tweaked and upgraded via a firmware update. 
I filmed this video in December 2022 and the latest firmware was released just a few weeks ago in November. The radio operates on all handbands between 160 meters and 6 meters and on all standard HF modes. It has a built-in antenna tuner, an internal battery and a great waterfall pan adapter on its 4 inch color display. When running off the internal battery it'll output 5 watts. If running off an external power supply or a larger battery it'll output 10 watts. Digital mode aficionados will appreciate the X6100's built-in sound card. For experimenters, the rig runs off a version of Linux, making it a portable Linux computer with an HF rig attached to it. The X6100 may not be a stocking stuffer like most of the other items discussed in this video, but for a new ham, it could be a great first rig and one they can use pretty much anywhere to work the world with a simple wire antenna. Ham Radio Outlet has literally thousands of items for hams, so I encourage you to surf the HRO website at hamradio.com. You can use the simple search or advanced search features at the top of each page to find specific items or items in your price range. Happy shopping and happy holidays. For Ham Radio Outlet, I'm Julian Frost, N3JF. <laughs>